Numerical Computation, Chapter 4, Extra Video Number 2. You can view this video after you finish the extra video number 1 of this chapter. So far, all the integrals we have worked on, they are finite interval integrals. And, but very often we would encounter integrals over infinite intervals. In this video, we look at a few ways of computing such integrations. We now consider the Gauss-Laguerre quadrature. Recall, in the last video, towards the end, we talked about last Gauss quadrature to compute the integral of a function multiplied by a weight function. And Gauss-Laguerre quadrature is an extension of that. In particular, this quadrature offers approximations for integrations over an infinite interval of this form. So we'll be computing integration from 0 to plus infinity of a function fx multiplied by an exponentially decay function e to the negative x. We denote the integral to be i. Under suitable gross assumptions on f, and this integral would be finite. And it is for that case we would seek a numerical approximation. We use the Laguerre polynomial. We call them by L, and there are many of them. We order them by index N. And it is known in the literature that this polynomial is actually a solution of the so-called Laguerre equation, which is a, a second-order and linear differential equation. And this is also known as the eigenvalue problem, where this number n here actually serves as an eigenvalue. Now, these eigenvalue problems are very much studied in the literature, and these polynomials are constructed and one can find tables of them in the literature. Here we list the first seven of them from L0 to L6. And one see that um, each of them is a polynomial of degree, highest degree matching the index we have here. The expression for the coefficients might seem complex, but they are just numbers once you've coded them in the computer just stores it. And furthermore, this set of polynomials are actually orthogonal to each other with respect to the weight function e to the minus x on the interval from 0 to infinity. Following the same discussion as the one we did in, in the last video, we can come up with an approximation rule for the integral um, as follows. So there is a set of um, integration points, the nodes, and f is evaluated at the nodes, and that value is multiplied by a weight function, wi, and you go through n of these. So um, for that integral, it turns out that these xi's are exactly the roots of the Laguerre polynomial. And uh, the wi can be expressed in, in this form. So the wi in the end is the um, integral of um, the L, but multiplied by the exponential function. And one could, in principle, work out explicitly. Now, we observe that the rule actually can be applied to general integral with some very simple manipulation. Let's say we wish to integrate a function g from 0 to infinity. To be able to use the Laguerre rule, we would need to have an e to the negative x here. Then we can manipulate it. We multiply by e to the x and e to the negative x, and therefore this is an identity. And then we can lump this function, ex times gx, and we call this 
f of x. And then we can write it in this form. And that's the form where we could apply the Laguerre interpolation rule. We now consider another of such quadrature rule, very much in the similar setting. This is called Gauss-Hermit quadrature. So this one can be used to approximate the integration of this form where you're integrating from negative infinity to positive infinity of a function fx multiplied by e to the negative x squared. You may consider this as a weight function. So again, um, we would use something called Hermit polynomial, and we denote them by H n. There is a family of infinitely many of them. And there are various ways of writing the equation for the Hermit polynomial. We introduce one that's called the physicist's version. There, these polynomials are actually solutions or finite solutions to the eigenvalue problem written here. So u w prime minus 2x u prime equals negative 2 lambda u, where lambda is an eigenvalue. Just a brief comment of uh, solutions of the eigenvalue problem like this. One can seek solution in the form of power series in powers of x. And uh, if you look a finite version of it, and, and for specific eigenvalues, one may find them. And then these leads to the Hermit polynomials. A more detailed discussion is outside the scope of this video. I encourage you to read the literatures on power series method and eigenvalue problems. So again, such polynomials are well established in the literature, and uh, here we list the first eight of them from H0 to H7, and we see that each Hn is a polynomial of degree n, and again, since these are solutions of the eigenvalue problems with respect to distinct eigenvalues, they are again orthogonal to each other in the proper definition of in a product. So by taking advantages of those polynomials, one has the quadrature for the integral. And that is again a weight wi multiplied by f evaluated at xi the nodes. And uh, we are probably expecting these xi's or the roots of the Hermit polynomial, Hn. So for Hn, we'll have n roots. And then the Wi's, um, we know it's the, the integral of um, the Hermit polynomial times the, the weight function, the exponential. And one can uh, manipulate it and obtain this expression, Wi equals this that gives you a way of exactly computing it. Finally, we throw in some ideas of computing integrations over infinite interval by some suitable variable change, such that after the variable change, the integration will be over a finite interval. A couple of examples we'll look at. So the first one, will be if we want to integrate over and the whole real line from negative infinity to positive infinity of function f. And we can do a variable change and set x to be t over 1 minus t squared. And then dx will be um, the derivative of that and dt. And then you see that when t is negative 1, when t approaches negative 1, this approaches negative inf infinity. And when t approaches positive 1, and this x approaches 
positive infinity. So theoretically, we have this identity. And then one can integrate in t from negative 1 to 1, which is a finite interval. Another example, if one wants to integrate from a to plus infinity, and we can do the variable change, that is x will be this guy here, a plus t over 1 minus t, and you can easily verify when t ranges from 0 to 1, and the x would range from a to infinity. Okay. And uh, differentiating this one in t, you get 1 over 1 minus t squared. Therefore, the final um, integration is on a finite interval from 0 to 1. One last example will be like a symmetric to the previous one. Let's say we want to integrate from negative infinity to a number a, and the variable change would be a minus this fraction, 1 minus t over t. Again, and you can verify as t ranges from 0 to 1, and this expression here, this x, would range from negative infinity to a. Okay, And one can come up with uh, various um, other variable change that will also do the job. And those choices will very much depend on the problem you have at hand. Okay, that's all for this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.